Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechphilly.com. Well, you know, Rabbi, we like to have people from the law enforcement community and the elected officials in the political government world, and we got that all wrapped into one with Arnold Proskin, our guest right, here okay. today. Arnie, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Mark, thank you, Rabbi. Thank this you for having me. This must be a Jewish with two for the price of one over <laughs> well, here. You got he was, a four, he was district attorney right. in the 60s. He was the uh, county judge, and he was also an assemblyman uh, in the early, into the early 80s. So now uh, he's a and that's where I when I sent him in into the early nineties. Okay. Yes. Well, maybe you started in the early. My 80s. problem was Mark. I couldn't hold a job. That's yeah. right. <laughs> well, uh, so I had a uh, when I first started reporting at the Capitol. He was the assembly. He would always come out. He would always treat me courteously. I was, you know, it was amazing. I mean, because here I was. What was I wasn't even twenty years old, and he was coming out and talking to me, and I was so impressed. And you know, and then he stopped thank aging, you. and I aged, and you know, he's just. <laughs> thank you, sir. You know, you know, but thank you have, for me helping you know, my career. I do appreciate that. So I also I, go back. I have a picture. Actually, I recently just was looking through all my old pictures, and when you're assemblyman took my kids and now they're grown up and sat them by the seat. You know, there was for a child, for any person mm -hmm. to sit at the seat of the, uh, you know, assemblyman that's made there. And we yeah, but let me tell you something. I used to bring kids, when I was a judge, the, I used to bring kids from school. I used to go visit the schools. In the assembly, as you just said, people would come in, I'd show I'd go around. They don't do that anymore, and they should. I have people come up to me now, twice as tall as I am, and say, Mr. Proskett, I remember you were in my class when I was in the eighth grade. I'd look up, i say, hey, hey. <laughs> so, but, but no, it, it really it means something to kids yes. to be able to, no, they should be able to well, do that. Well, I get Jewish uh, uh, class, schools, uh, for leaders of Jewish schools from New York City calling me up now, because I'm giving the tours, and I'm have, getting them into the assembly and the Senate sitting. The Senate won't let you sit in the chairs, but the assembly, yeah. they let you sit in the chairs, the people's right. house. And as long as you don't open up the drawers mm -hmm. in, the, in the assemblyman's desks, you're fine. You could sit there. But, uh, yeah, I bring them in, and I'm doing the tours. I mean, I, as a favor, not as a job. And, know. You know. <laughs> it's and fantastic. It does your heart, heart well to, you know, to yeah. see the kids so they be okay. part of the whole situation. Yes, yes it does. You know. so, tell, so when you were elected DA first and then judge, or you were judge first? I was elected DA. 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 When I was elected DA in 1968, mm -hmm. I was the first Republican to ever beat the machine. Fifty years they hadn't had a Republican win. And it's really crazy. And the reason, I know the reason I won, I was from downtown Albany. It was a very strong Jewish population, and they moved out, and then it was an Italian population there. And they were, I was their kid. You know, they all knew me. We know, we, in fact, you know, I was born Jewish, I'm Orthodox, mm -hmm. everything else. But then all, most of the Jewish families got money. They moved out of there. My father passed away when I was 12 years old, so my mother still worked. And I have, more, I have as many friends who are Italian and as I do Jewish, and they all voted for me. Well, that must I was their guy. They didn't care what O'Connell had to say. That must have been tough for you, having your father pass at age 12. Oh, God, it was Because terrible. your bar mitzvah it, was the next year. My father died in October. My bar mitzvah was in April. Half it a was year. a horror show, a horror then show. Then you still went through with the bar mitzvah in his memory, I guess. Oh, yes, and uh, they had me die, daven. I, you know, I led, yeah. led the davening at the time and everything else, and... It was horrible. It was just like, gosh, you know, it shouldn't happen. And you took, no, it shouldn't. And you should very, very times. young, and um, I, it happened. I wanted to, uh, was it a heart attack? Or well, in those, you know, that was a hard, a lot, lot of yeah, things happened things, like that. Yeah. You know, like now they probably could have done things to fix yeah, you, but sure, back, no, in, back in those days they couldn't. And they had code words back then for things. So anyway, I just wanted to, uh, you grew up on the South End. Yes. And, were, uh, and there were like three or four synagogue, Orthodox synagogues back then. Within like two a, blocks of each yeah, other. Yeah, there was like a wave every 20 years uh, in the late 1800s. But Mark, these three yeah. synagogues were all loaded. Yes. They were busy. Yes. They had big populations. Yes. And as they said, there were Catholic churches. There were about three or four in the whole same district. They were all loaded. It was amazing but in those know, days. But you know, there's a oh, long, uh, long-standing joke. Uh, it wasn't told by Joan Rivers. But anyway, <laughs> I, uh, that, you know, there's a reporter that goes to a desert island and sees one guy on the desert island, and the guy says, oh, let me show you around. And he's like, okay, so here's the coconuts, here's this, here's that, and this is uh, my home, and this, and this is the building that's my synagogue, 
And the reporter says, well, what's this building then? He says, this is my other synagogue. Well, why do you have two? This is the shul I go to, and this is the shul I don't go to, and every Jew needs yeah. a shul they don't go to. Uh, so, know, <laughs> on the other hand, on so, a positive note, so on you know, the, I think that the, is positive. The, well, <laughs> the decline of Jewish life, I think is just you hit the nail on the head. It's just, you know, of course, I live in Delmar, but, you, you know, it's suburban. The Jewish people are mainly, they're not in the inner city. They're in the suburbias, mm -hmm. wherever they are. And they don't have those smells, the sounds. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about philosophy. Right. It's just the culture, you know, that, oh, like that, when you were there, you just felt being Jewish. That was it. Well, you, you could walk to Shul on Shabbos. Yeah. There's no problem. You're like yeah. a half a block away. It's very easy to walk to Shul. Yeah, there's and, bakeries. There's oh, all yeah. so kinds we had, of We had all kinds of Jewish bakeries on Pearl Street. Butchers. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. 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 Bullshit, so you bullshit, felt bullshit being shops, being of Jewish. Course. Now a kid grows up in suburbs, doesn't have that feeling anymore. No. Not so, you know, and the, one of the synagogues, uh, Bethel Jacob, was sold uh, in 1964 to a church that kept everything in pristine condition that was there. So it looks like a synagogue from way back when. In fact, the upstairs where the women sat, there was still a, uh, a little uh, brass uh, emblem that with her name, S. Lipman. That's, that's they right. still left on it because you bought a seat. You bought a seat. That was yes. it. You know they, they oh, gave yeah, you a brass nameplate. You know, yep. and uh, it's a it's a real throwback. But the you know the family just left it the way they yeah. found it, and now they nice. moved out to another synagogue, another church that they built, and this building is somewhat vacant. So hmm. you know we'll see what we could do in terms of bringing that stained glass back into the Jewish yeah. community. I mean, back so, to your career, the yeah. DA. I mean. It's interesting. I mean, Sal, were you before Sal Greenberg yes. or right before? Oh, I, no, I'm not before that, Sal, yeah. no. I'm only here Rabbi, let me tell years. you something. When I got elected, there were hits out on me. I mean, really? literally, yeah. they wanted to kill me. Really? Literally wanted what, to kill gangsters, me. What, the gangsters, you mean? Just no, I mean the cops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, really? everybody, everybody was, it was, Albany County was the most, more corrupt than Chicago ever was. Yeah, I'm from Chicago. It was the most, you know, that's why I said <laughs> that. It really, it was, it's absolutely amazing. If you could buy a pen in a, in a five and ten cent store for 50 cents, they would buy a truckload for $10 a piece so they could whack up the money. That's what they're doing. Right. They used to pay to vote. I mean, I was a little boy. I remember walking down with my mother, $5. Yeah, they give her $5 to vote their way. And it was really, really horrible. And the police, I'll talk about the police, and I'll talk about the sheriffs. They were all, it was just politically corrupt. Now, Albany County has the best, sheriff, one of the best sheriff's department in the whole yes. state of New York, and our police department is the same. Because all of a sudden we got in there, then they went to civil service, and they were, got all this stuff behind them. And, uh, you know, it makes me feel good that I was, because see, in those days, the DA, if you did something wrong, the, the them didn't like you. They'll start talking about indicting you and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But when I went in, I, I, I went in honestly. I said, look, if you do something wrong, I don't care whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, or what are you, I'm going to go after you. If you don't do anything wrong, I'm not going to do a thing. And, and, that, and that's basically, and the whole system changed. Mm -hmm. Sal came in when I ran for county judge and I went on the bench, and it's very, very funny. Sal knew me since I was a baby. Sal's so still kicking, you know. Yeah, he's no, 90 really well. years, 90 plus years old. Yes, right. You're not. His father was, no, not yet. His father was like 102, mm -hmm. 103. Thank God he lived a wonderful life up till a year before he died. This, was, is, yeah, this is not strong. funny. He was in the home, but he was to chase the women around. Yeah. That's yeah. And, and Sal, thank God, is just in such, such wonderful shape. Yes. But when Sal got elected, even though he knew me since I was a little boy, I said to my wife, uh-oh, hang on, because if he's going to be like them, he's going to try to go after me. Sal went in there, one of the first speeches he made was what a wonderful DA Arnold Proskin was in all right. I mean, he didn't care about, he played it straight, and he kept yeah. the thing going how, straight down the line. How long did you serve as DA? One uh, term? Uh, well, the first, no, um, 60, I was elected in 68, uh, re-elected in 71, okay. and it was in 76 when I went on the bench. Okay, so you served two terms, and that's... Yeah. No, not two full terms, no. Right, but you were still there I where was, you had to run for re-election. That's, that's, oh, yes. You had a re-election, oh, yeah. which is... Yeah, I ran for re-election in 71, right, and ironically, is, yeah. I won that election with the numbers that Democrats used to have when they ran against everybody else. You know. And pe the people just saw what was happening, and 
Uh, you know, I mean... But you were on a special ticket in 68 also. I mean, you were maybe... Because there was a Republican congressman, a Republican assemblyman, a Republican senator. I mean, that was like a heyday. But nobody carried Albany County but me. But what Albany was the County. Everybody, see, when you're in the districts? assembly or the Senate, things like this, you have part of Albany and part of Rensselaer, part of Albany, yeah. part of Saratoga, whatever it's going to be. But the, so the Senate district wasn't like all of Albany County? Like oh, no. They no. I was the only one time. who, who uh, carried oh, Albany County. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. but, but, you st but I'm just saying that, you know, when, you know, I was the executive director of the Albany County Republican Committee for two and a half years, and Fred Field <laughs> was the county chairman for a brief time. And Fred Field was 30 years as the town supervisor in Colony. That's right. So he said, you know what? I remember 1968, we had, I don't even remember their names now, but, you know, they were alive. Dan Button was the Dan, congressman. Right. And, um, um, Ed something? Um, I don't remember. No. Doesn't matter. But but, but see the yeah. point is that but the, we had but we had a reunion, and the, yeah. there was one guy who passed away, but his wife came, and the the guy who was state senator I think was still alive, or maybe it was the assemblyman yeah. who was still alive. Well, but we either way, I mean, we had this reunion, but it was like 1998, so we had a 30 year reunion. We didn't get a Republican elected in 30 years, no, and know. that was know. you know since then. But 68 but was a special year for Republicans. Mark. <laughs> the Democratic Party yes. is not the corrupt party it was then either. Now, the Democratic Party now. Of course, yes. Right. It's not I mean, the corrupt party they, that it was then. Do they control right. Albany County? Yes. Are they corrupt? No. Right. They, they run the county. Hey, listen, they run the place, and I don't think any of no, them, like in anything else, somebody could be, but, but it's not a corrupt machine. I don't think they would know how to be machine. corrupt and get away with it, you know. Well, but I remember in 1976, uh, uh, Rastus Corning, endorsed uh, Jimmy Carter for president. He was one of the first big mayors, big city mayors, to endorse for president. Yeah. So Carter came up from Plains, Georgia, to Albany. I remember that. Yeah. And he said, you know, thank you very much for the endorsement. And Rasta says, I just don't want to be a name on your stationery. I want to really help you. He said, okay, give me uh, the list of all the enrolled Democrats in the city of Albany. So Rastus opens up his bottom drawer of his desk, <laughs> takes out the Albany City phone book, and says, here. Yeah. Really? See, right and now, what the you, he's 100% right. Right, right yeah. now, you push the button on the computer, and they yeah. spit him out. That's but all he has the story. city phone book, and that yeah. was all the enrolled Democrats, and that was it. You know, that was, no, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> was, Rastus Corning, by the way, even though he was on, you know, he was the mayor, he, he was a real classy guy, though. He really, really was. Was he part of the machine? Of course he was. Yeah. But he, uh, he was really I mean, he a, would pick up his phone at the office and be very nice without guy. a secretary transfer. I would him see him. I would see him at functions, yeah. and he'd always make sure he'd said hello. And, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was really, he was really a good guy. What was your biggest case as DA? Do you remember having a special case that stood out from all the others? Yeah, well, we, I, 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 I tried the last murder case, but the, the one that Tell was... Tell me about that. The guy was um, killed up in the palace, but the, the, the yeah. best, the biggest, ca the best yeah. case, I think, was when we had an investigation of the Albany County Jail, and they all thought that they were going to go to jail. Albany County Jail in those days, you, know, you put a prisoner in, door supposed to be locked. Guess what? The locks didn't work half the time. It was it was unbelievably bad. It was like they just never did anything up wow. there. So we had a grand jury investigation, and um, what happened was. Was George Infante? I the didn't want no. It was no. before George oh, Infante. He, he was like my godfather. Well, I just thought in. George was there forever. George Infante was, is was my dear friend. I he thought was like he was as old as Methuselah. But anyway. No, no, he was a great guy. No, no, no. It was before him. Okay. And what happened was um, the people there thought they were all going to get indicted. The the captains and stuff. And it happens. I'll mention a name. Um, Bob Signoracci. Sure. You know, remember him? Yeah. He's one of my closest friends. His yeah. uncle, his father, and grandfather worked there. And they, th I didn't know them at all. But I didn't want to indict anybody. I just wanted to clean the jail up. So I had a report, grand jury report. Well, subsequent to that, the Signorachis, they couldn't believe they weren't indicted. And the family, you know, really wonderful, wonderful people. But they cleaned the jail up after that. Great. The grand jury said, you got to do this, 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 and this. And guess what? The jail is fine. The jail runs very well now. And again, right now, it's considered top one of the tops in the well, state. Well, and also. they have new sections now, right? Than, oh yeah. Than what they had before. Oh, the jail so, is fantastic. So it's but, a lot but of different. But in those days, you see, in different. those days, the machine wanted to yeah. spend money to stuff in their pocket. That's right. all. They didn't want to spend it. You know, give me the money, I'll take care of it. Right. But it changed. It's all changed. Okay, so that that's your best DA story. What about your best county judge story? Do you have a favorite? 
Well, I can't say favorites. It was a lot of them, a lot of them I going can, in. I said it, not huh? you. I said favorite, not you. <laughs> I know you. I heard you say favorite. No, there was, there was, it was good. It was, the county, being county judge is a very interesting, interesting thing. If that's I had ten, stayed... That's a 10-year term, right? Yes, yeah. but if I had stayed, I'm sure I probably would have been Supreme Court, whatever it was going to be. I didn't want to. I really didn't. It was, uh, I think I was too young when I got in there, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Um, 35, something like that. I just made it, I just made it over the top when I got So with like DA, it. you were in your 20s when you were DA? I was just 30. Wow. And uh, no way you're not a young kid. You know, they want to do everything. But no, it's, uh, I, I truly, I, I look back and um, not, not to brag or anything, but oh, I did sure. very well in law school. And yeah. uh, we, my wife and I wanted to come back here. We were married at the time. We wanted to come back to Albany. Our families were here. I had some big offers of jobs down in New York City and in Boston. And could, I'm sure if I took them, I'd have so much money, I'd be buying your, the station from Excellent. them here, whatever you want. No, seriously. <laughs> and you know something? If I had to do it again, I went with a nice firm when I got out. And in those days, by the way, the big firms in Albany, they wouldn't hire a Jew. Really? Oh, boy, they were discriminatory. Mm -hmm. I was the first Jew who hired in this one particular wow. firm. And, um, and then what happened was I had this opportunity to do, to do that. Uh, and if I, had the if, I had, if I had to do it over again, I would do the same thing, even though I'm sure it cost me a lot of money. I mean, because, you know, being with a big firm, I would have made mega, mega bucks. And, and then you were in the assembly. When did you first get elected in the assembly? 1984. Okay. 1984. Well, that was no, the I, election. I, I, yeah, 84 is when I was elected. 82, wasn't it? No. It, no, 84. No, 84. And then my succeed? first year was January 185. Who was your predecessor? Um, actually, Fred um, Fred Field was in there before me. Okay. And, it, and he, he ran for something else, I believe, and then, uh, then I ran for that. Like, maybe um, he ran for supervisor. And yeah, well, what happened so. was that, in, you know, by the time that happened, Okay, you could win a race if you run hard enough, you do the right things. Mm -hmm. And I went there and I, I enjoyed being in the assembly. Ironically, uh, I, I probably shouldn't say this on television, but my best friends turned out to be the other side. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, remember when, when I got out of the assembly, how the ultra conservatives went after me? They didn't like me. They, didn't, they probably didn't like me because I was Jewish. That was the first part, but that's something else. But like guys like Shelley Silver, He's still one of my close friends. Is he? Okay. I mean, he was, he's the head of it. And, yeah, sure. You know, but, something. But Stanley to me, Fink it doesn't matter. Democrat, Republican, yeah. doesn't mean a thing. If you're running and I like you, I don't care what your party is, I'll vote for you. Stanley Fink was the Speaker of the Assembly Stanley Fink the was there. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. And then Mel Miller came, Mel Miller came right. later. Saul Weprin. Yes, after Saul. that. But, you yeah. know, it's a little interesting because okay, you are Republican and the Assembly, you know, is totally Democratic. The, you know, some people say, well, why would... You go into a situation like that, like being an underdog, or you know, they say it's very. We have so many politicians that actually come on our show, and the Republicans of the assembly even now, and you know, they kind of express Rabbi, their I frustration got, and being. You know, I got along the with the people over there. I respected them, and we had mutual respect. I mm -hmm. think I didn't care with the Democrat. I had a lot of times. Dick Connors, you remember that name? Sure. He was a wonderful, wonderful guy. Mm -hmm. Dick Connors was part of the O'Connell machine. Mm -hmm. He was the only one that didn't want to kill me, I think. He treated yeah. me with respect. He was a wonderful guy. He was in the assembly mm -hmm. with me. And Dick, and I said a wonderful guy, I mean that. Yeah, his son's Michael Connors, the county controller. That's right. Well, Dick and I are friends. Uh -huh. We're friends. Mm -hmm. And I used to be like his free lawyer in the assembly, helping him with some of these bills. That's where we were. And I'll never forget when he left, when he was leaving, I made a speech. They still talk about it down there. But the end of my speech was, when I grow up, I want to be an assemblyman like Dick Connors. <laughs> he was a wonderful, wonderful man. Well, I man. worked for an assemblyman, Joel Miller, who was very much like you, out of your mold, where he would reach over the aisle and he was very yeah. much in, but you know, he was a Republican, but he got along and he was a dentist and he really gave these passionate speeches about the medical field and he was very Look, that's the way it should be. Yeah, but I mean, back, you're there not to say Republican, Democrat or yeah, whatever it's going to be. Yeah, but back then in the 80s, there was a different temperament. There was people oh, yeah. getting, you know, collegial, you'd have card games afterwards, after session, where you, you know. Tell me about it. You know, you'd play cards. Every and, Tuesday we'd be in Joe Lentil's office and have coffee. That's and, right. Yeah, a little, little whatever. extra Irish <laughs> whatever. coffee, yeah. But they had a, you know, but it was a very, 
uh, it was a very collegial atmosphere. Yes. You know, you could fight on the floor and in conference or whatever, but then when you left, you went to you know separate corners. You became friends and you walked well, you down. You do it with arm courtesy also. Exactly. Absolutely. And it doesn't happen. I mean, I got bills way. passed in there, and Aren't you, you know, they're all you know Democrats are overwhelming, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. But you know, I I I'd sell my idea and everything else, and all of a sudden they could pass a bill. Aren't you amazed that there are so many people? since 83 or 85 that have been indicted and left under a cloud and oh. aren't does it make you sick um, it's make me sick is better than amazing there amazed. were 43 it's terrible 43 st it's bad terrible. Uh, legislative apples that i've you know yeah well uh, some of them were friends of mine and then i've lost a lot of friends of mine who were over there um, mm -hmm. and i'm not going to go into names or anything else but it really does make no, you leave sick leave that to me I it mean, really <laughs> really makes you sick it, it does what, it does um, and now they got 10 open seats or 12 open seats in the assembly, and that's all going to be filled this year. And now hopefully next year we'll have a fresh start and maybe, you know, we won't find uh, people bugging, each assemblyman bugging each other. And well, then, you, you know, know, but I mean, bug where they put a listening device. I Mark, mean, Shelley is running a good ship. He, he, he's ahead of the whole thing. Uh, I know they tried to nail him for a few things, everything like that. Shelley's as honest as the day is long. Yeah, but he doesn't disclose who his clients are for Lux and He's, he's, White, um, what, for he's a partner firm. in uh, Whites and Luxembourg. Whites and Luxembourg, but he won't disclose who their clients are. About, they, that's because they have about 3,000 clients, and they're all people who died from asbestos and things like that. That's all, that's all Whites and Luxembourg does. Yeah, but why doesn't he at least come clean with why? I mean, it's just the fact he doesn't talk about it that gives a cloud of suspicion. Mark, if you to, said to me, who are your clients? I say, you're my client. Someone says, you represent Mark? None of your business. I can't tell you that. It's confidential. But now they have this financial disclosures and you have to, you know, now they want everyone to say who. No, I don't think you have to, you have to say who your clients are. No. Well, you know, but that's what the good go goo-goos, the good government groups want. Yeah, they, they like to have it, but you yes, can't. For, for, for um, conflict of interest purposes. Well, because there's an ethical consideration. If the rabbi is talking to me as his attorney, or I'm talking to the rabbi, right, that's right. Uh, it's confidential. He can't tell what I say, and I can't tell what and he says. They're not asking that. They're asking just for the name. But it's the same thing. You can't give that information. Okay. Because, as I said, I, I know Weiss and Luxembourg, and they yeah. have thousands and thousands of cases, asbestos cases, where some poor guy dies. I don't even think he says them. how much money he earns every year from Whites and Luxembourg. He does we? say that. He, he puts does. The, you bet your life oh, he does. Oh, now he does? That, okay. that, well, he has to because that's on the form well, you have to okay. fill out. So now I'm going to go look. Thank you. Yeah, check, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> it's I'm sure online. he made at least $10,000. At least. You know, so. <laughs> A day. <laughs> you know, and, and you were talking about your, the assembly. You served... Uh, 12, 6 terms? Ten, 10 years, five, five, full oh, five, terms. Terms. 5 full terms. And you were, uh, were you defeated? Did you, re did you leave on your own? Or? Well, no, the, my Republican friends uh, went after me oh, because I was a so little too, li too liberal for them. Uh -huh. um, you know, it, it, the, conser the Conservative you? Party never liked me at all. Never got their line? And I think my religion may be one of the reasons. No, really? I didn't get their line. Okay. But, but um, what happened was, and this is a very interesting story, in those days, if a person came in looking for a job, and you can't say to that person, you're a woman, I'm not hiring you. You're a man, I'm not hiring you. But if the person is gay, you could say, you're gay, I'm not hiring you. That was not part of the law. Mm -hmm. And every year they would put in, and they put in a bill that would change this, and I would kill it, believe it or not, and the codes committee, it never got out of committee because of me, mm -hmm. and I said, I do not want to condone a lifestyle. I am opposed to any discrimination of any kind whatsoever, and I am. I said, but I don't want to condone a lifestyle. So then my eighth year, ninth year, whatever it was, they came up with the bill. They didn't say Proskin on the bill head. Proskin, read this, you dummy. It says, this bill is not intended to condone a lifestyle. And I got the thing passed in the assembly. I got it out of committee. And they, can, they went nuts. They can, mm -hmm. In fact, my own leadership and my own party. So they primaried me. And, um, yes. With Bob Prentice? Yes. Okay. And people to this day say if they had known, that, you know, they, they would have voted for me. But, you know, nobody expects that to happen. Right. They primaried me, and I got beat in the primary. Um, and by the way, I was offered to run as a Democrat, and I was told I could win if I did. But my wife and I talked about it, and I couldn't do it. I had so many people who worked back in late 60s and little old ladies. And everything. My wife says, you know, it would kill them if something like that happened. 
So I, I didn't, and uh, maybe I'm glad I didn't, but... Uh, so was, in 95, you went back to private practice? Oh, yeah. I was in private practice in the assembly, though. Exactly, yes, but I'm just saying... And I wouldn't you, tell my clients either. Nobody asked for but it. But you didn't want to go to some other elected office. You gave up elected office Oh, at that point, yes, I did. Okay. Yes. So I mean, I did judge work yet, you know, appointed judge. In fact, now I'm doing um, hearings for the state controller uh, as a judge, mm -hmm. and, and a very, very interesting job, and uh, I enjoy doing that. And well, that's good. It's fun kind of thing. So there was a slogan, I think, from 1995 that said, where there's a will, there's a way. Was there's there a, a, a slogan was that, that Prentice gave oh, oh, against you or something? Or? I don't know what he said. Okay. They, they, you know, they accused me yeah. of doing criminal things. There was a nasty case, and I, I think I say stupidly now, I didn't go back after them. I just said, you know, which I should have because well, you, I probably you, would have beaten him if I had done that. You never uh, took a per diem. No, right? I'm here. Right, and you never put in for gas. My, no. But Hoblock did. Mike Hoblock, when he was in the Senate, that's what defeated him. Yeah, I know. You know, that was a shame because, you know, then, you know, he wanted this. He went from county executive to the state yeah. Senate. I mean, we shoot, a, you know, the Republicans shoot themselves in the foot. I mean, it's just... Well. <laughs> Listen, all I know is that I'm looking back at life. I said, well, I did a lot of nice things, had yes. a lot of fun. I was doing judicial hearing officer work, and then the state in its wisdom three years ago decided they didn't want to pay us. But you could do it for nothing, they said. It's our state of New York, right? And we all said something that I wouldn't say yeah. out loud too much. I said, no, we'll do it for nothing, thank you. But that's when the controller who spent 10 years in the assembly with me right. suggested I, I contact their office and... I, I, I truly enjoyed working with the people. And, you must and have a great Rolodex. <laughs> or something like you that. You must have a great Rolodex. I just wanted to, uh, you also were president of Congregation Beth Abraham Jacob that's during correct. the 60s also? Or yeah, 70s? well, you see, that's basically, um, oh, yeah, before, before then, I think, or maybe even after then. Who was the rabbi then? Um, rabbi Bom, no, Rabbi Bomser was, no, it was before Bomser, oh, no, don't ask me. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. Gewerk or Gewerk, uh, was it Rabbi, okay. No. Well, Blinder. Blinder? Blinder. Rabbi Blinder was there. Aaron yep. Blinder, okay. And, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was very, very good. And I was there, and then ultimately, believe it or not, we left the Orthodox Synagogue and we went to um, Ohav Shalom. Why? Do you want me to truth why? Yeah. And I would say it, and... A guy who was a wonderful, wonderful guy turns out to be the rabbi there. Uh, my daughter was getting married, and at the time the shul was not being a shul. It was totally re being renovated. It was terrible. And she was getting married at the Shaker Ridge Country Club. And uh, so I asked the rabbi, uh, I said, Rabbi, would you do it? I, months and months in advance. I said, it's not kosher. If you could just do the ceremony, I, I really want you to do it, right? He said yes, and two weeks before the wedding, he came in and says to me, Judge, I can't do the wedding. Two weeks before the wedding, and I said, Rabbi, why didn't you, and I was all upset. And that's, I resigned from the shul at that point. Yeah, why? I said. Why did, he couldn't, why did he say he couldn't? Because it wasn't kosher there, and it's, you know, and, and I understand, but you should have told me when I asked him. I had to fly a and rabbi in rabbi from Cincinnati, put him in a hotel, make the, whole, make the room kosher and everything, which we did. Yeah. And it was, it was crazy. And was this crazy. was Rabbi Blinder who said this to no, you? No, no, no. Bomser. Oh. I happen to like him now. He knew he did wrong after this. Very interesting. Every time we had, like, like my granddaughter was now 14, um, she had open heart surgery when she was three. She had a whole nerve three. Who's there waiting with this Rabbi Bomser? Every time something came up, as he, and I, he told people, and it got back to me, how we know he made a big mistake. You know, and uh, I mean, it's it's okay not to do it. I would have understood that, but you don't wait two weeks before the wedding. My goodness gracious! So you were president under Rabbi Blinder. I think it was Blinder, yeah. And or, then you had, your daughter got married under Rabbi when Rabbi Bomser Rabbi was Bombs here. Rabbi was there, yeah. Okay, so there was a set, but you were always so while you were president, you were there. I don't know whether Blinder was the was the rabbi or not. I don't, I don't recall okay. who, very frankly. But we had um, so this was on Hackett Bull. The synagogue was on Hackett. Boulevard? Well, that's when they moved up the Hackett, right. right. It was originally was downtown Hackett. on the yeah. corner of Franklin and Herkimer Street. Right, right, Herkimer Street, sure, yeah. yeah. So, okay, yeah, so, yeah. So, Franklin so, Ferry, I should say, I'm sorry. No. You should say, that's the Bethel Jacobs Synagogue. That's yeah, right. That's still there. So, anyway, it's... 
you know, We're out I, of time. I just love the history, and yeah, you okay. have a lot of it. And oh, you, I enjoyed being you with you. You have a diverse li life over here from the history of a Jewish community. And I don't know if anybody in the, the, the we've had over 125 interviews. Rabbi, I don't know if anybody has. I'm very proud of my heritage and background, and I speak up, and I just am proud to be proud to be Jewish, proud to be brought up where I am, proud of my friends and. And I'm proud, proud to like have you. you amongst, uh, I consider you my friend. So thank you very I'm much, I'm proud Mark. of that, so thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Thank Baskin, you. for being thank on you Jewish guys. View, and continue your good work that you're doing and with good health. I'll try to stay Absolutely. out of trouble, too. Okay. <laughs> thank very you, nice. you too. Thank you.